Dear Coconuts, it's me again, and today we are going to discuss the 4.2 updates and some of the changes that Netmarble and 4Plat have made along with it. So come take a look with me. So jumping right into it, we're going to first discuss some of the main, or actually, for the most part, this video is going to discuss the main points of this recent update. This update was huge, and a lot of it had to do with improving the functionality of the user interface. Uh, for example, when you enter into Golden Moon, previously, once you pick a level, you were forced to enter that level. So if you accidentally picked a level that was too high or too low, um, you were either forced to stick with your decision or to manually exit out of it and be stuck for an hour before you could try and re-enter in the correct level. Um, now you don't have to do that. There is a cancel button once you click on your level for Golden Moon. So that's pretty sweet. And there's a lot of little updates that have to do with things like that. Um, we also are going to see that there are some new events that this does. It says, um... Alliance War, there's some new dueling events and invasion events that we're going to be seeing. So that's all pretty exciting as well. But some of the main things that they have done with this is they have increased the Citadel to a max level of 38. And with it comes T8. Just kidding. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense for them to come out with T8 because we have just recently gotten the Troop Training 2 tree, which has allowed us to put some research into our T7 to finally make them stronger than T6. So it wouldn't have made much sense for them to drop T8. But what they have done is dropped T7 Tactical Infantry Troops. And according to the forum update, uh, these troops cost the same to train as well as heal as our traditional T7. Uh, these are just going to be better equipped for attacking. What we also see in a lot of the newer kingdoms don't really realize that they are stifled in this area quite yet, but the older kingdoms and older alliances are, is that we have new alliance research. So when you go into your alliance and your research, there are now three levels of alliance research. Once you have completed a research, you can then go on to the next level. Another way of improving um, the user interface is previously you would have to toggle between the resources and gold if you wanted to make a donation. But now you can just automatically hit the gold button or donate gold button as many times as you'd like in a row. This is effective in the level 2 and level 3s because to donate resources it also costs a metal. You can bypass that, however, by hitting the donate gold. What we also see is a new blessing structure. So you're still going to have your temple up here where you make your wishes. But down here, we're going to have blessings. And every day you're allowed to do up to 50 blessings. And the more blessings that you do, the better the boost that it gives you in return. Now these blessings cost zero gold, or at least at the lower levels, let's see, once you get up to the higher levels, it's going to cost. Nice thing is you could do them all at once if you'd like, or as little as you'd like. So this one here, the Obelisk of Creation, it's giving a troop march speed in domination. So that's pretty nifty. It has potential. I'm not super excited about that one. <laughs> now if we go into Heroes, we're going to see at the bottom left, there is now a settings box. When you click on it, it allows you to purchase presets for your heroes. You can get all kinds of fancy and rearrange your heroes however you'd like. For example, if you want to have all your dueling heroes together and up front, you could set them up that way. If you want your raid boss heroes up front, you could set it up that way. Or just your attacking heroes, which is what I've done. Now the first slot costs five keys to unlock, and the subsequent slots cost 20 keys. So I've only unlocked the first one. And then you can save. 
Now with this have also come new heroes. So we're gonna see here that we have Ivar. He comes pre-trained in infantry traits and comes with an infantry attack 15% rune. Now those of you who are interested in him for duels, we have a Hellfire attack, which summons Hellfire to deal damage in a horizontal line and decreases their defense. His passive skills are Tenacity and Aura of Attack. We've also gotten Loki. He comes, although I've changed it already, he comes in a Cavalry trait with a Cavalry Damage Leverage Rune of 10%. As far as duels goes, he's a lot like Feylord. Feylord has a blizzard attack which freezes the enemies. Uh, Loki has a mind control attack that freezes or stuns them for seven seconds. And his passive attacks are toughness and aura of flame. Now I mentioned that there are some traits that I've changed they have added two new traits recently to the trait details. One of them is Infirmary, which is going to give you a discount on your speed for healing troops. We all know what the cost, I mean, it's the biggest complaint of this game. So anything that they do that's going to give us a discount for healing injured troops is fantastic. And then what I'm particularly excited for is this crafting trait. Now... My hero that I have it on is only a level 40. So at level 40, you're going to get a 4% deduction in your crafting equipment cost. Even at that low, at, you know, just a 4%, that's still pretty significant when you're looking at your level 40 gears where it's costing you, you know, 8 million silver per piece. Also, what you may notice is that we have three tabs on the far right now instead of two. And that is because the third tab is going to open up your equipment presets. Now, it, it costs one key per preset. So we're going to go over to Feylord, who I've already set up with two presets already. And the first preset, I've done his attack gear. The second preset I've loaded up with Raid Boss gear. And it's really easy to toggle between the two. What I don't like about the equipment preset is that you can't put the same gear on multiple presets. So, for example, um, with the... Hunter's Mark or Raid Boss gear set that I have, I always use my highest weaponry to attack with. But I can't assign it because I already have it assigned on the first preset. So it pretends to let me. So we'll equip it here and equip it there. But then when I go back to one and hop back over, it's gone. Poof! So that's kind of a bummer that you can't have multiples of the same equipment just kind of preset for different heroes. But it's still easier than having to completely draw them naked and reset them up. Finally, what we're going to see is that we have gotten hero pets. Which is just one more way to give us a ton of boost. You can currently get your hero summoning scrolls or pet summoning scrolls um, through packs. As well as your free pack, Monday through Friday, is going to come with one pet summoning scroll. And your daily quest. So if you go into quest, daily quest, your first chest is going to give you two. Once you have those scrolls, you're going to go into your summoning area and you will summon a pet. These pets are there permanently. It's not a one-time use. 
So I got myself a fancy little dire wolf. And once you do that, you can go into your codex there. Much like the gear codex, there's a pet codex. It's going to show you what all you have or break them down into grades. Once you click on one, you can see that these are enhanceable. For the black unicorn, for me to enhance it to plus one, I'm going to need five of them. Now it only gives two and a quarter percent of an increase, but at least it gives you something to do with these extra pets because um, you can't sell them and it's better than just sitting there in your inventory and summoning is completely random. So you're bound to get multiples as you're trying to get higher. Now if you go into um, some of the packs and you find that your scrolls aren't showing up in here earlier, I bought a hero level 5 to 6 scroll. It was not showing up. I was not able to summon anything. You go into your items and scroll down on the bottom right tab and you're gonna see that you're gonna find your pet summoning scroll there and that's where you can summon your grade five to six so we'll see what I got da, 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 da. poof chimera yay but cat you might say, how do we appoint these magical beasts that we are now acquiring? And I shall show you. If you go into your heroes, you're going to see in their menu on the lower left hand side is a wolf icon. And that is the icon to appoint your hero pets. By clicking on that, it's going to pull up all your little familiars. And by clicking on each one it's going to show you what their stats are on the right hand side and what boosts or debuffs they give. Again these are not one time use so once you get them they're here to stay and you can appoint and unappoint as needed. So that is about it coconuts as always please feel free to leave me a comment if there's something I covered and I didn't cover it. Um, quite clearly for you or if there's something I didn't cover that you have questions about um, feel free to leave a comment if you're bored or if there's something that you want to see just leave me a comment why not um, as always if you happen to have an extra second um, like and subscribe so you could hear more awful accents that I do randomly in my videos and as always as well if you happen to be bored check out our website www.ironthroneelite.com there's some pretty good information on that site tool around in there if things need updating or if you see something there that's missing drop me a line until next time